Hey, this is Jake Hillinger, Habitat Solutions. Right behind me you see some hinge cuts. And those were created to basically make a barrier here because I'm standing right in the edge of a food plot out in front of me. And this allowed the deer to come around this one side, but to kind of not cut through here to, to go through another opening over here. Great time of the year, it's habitat season. A lot of you guys are gonna be going out in the woods and hinge cutting, notching and falling, trying to create all different types of habitat for your properties this year. So I thought this would be a really good time to talk about hinge cutting. And I think it's probably one of the most misunderstood habitat techniques that I see on the habitat pages through Facebook and different social media forums. There are so many different ways to use hinge cutting, like these cherries right here. It's more of a barrier. It's not created for bedding. It's just to block deer and to allow them to come in and out over here where I've got some licking branches and an entry and exit trail for deer to enter this food plot. But it also can be used to basically create a block or a barrier that comes up behind a stand and then you can leave a 25 to 40 yard gap where your bedding area is out in front of you and I wanted to discuss that today in this upcoming video and show you some diagrams and give you some tips on things that you can do to set up your property to make it number one hold more deer have bedding that you know is being used and then how to hunt it correctly during the right time of the year so I hope you enjoy this video you learn a couple of things and remember good luck and good habitat what you see out in front of you is a typical woodlot that I often see once I've been hired to come in and try and help develop a plan for landowners and hunters. There's many that are new to this game that think, oh man, I can't wait to get in here and get the sunlight to the ground and just start holding all kinds of deer. Well, I'm here to tell you that there is some strategy that needs to go into this before you just start dropping trees. And many times it'll look a little bit like this when I'm there a little later in the spring and the landowners aren't quite sure how many trees they need to cut because they see the green flowers and understory emerging. But what there isn't is any leaves that have come out on those trees. Once the leaves come out in full bloom and this entire woodlot is under shade, there'll be nothing growing. And you can just see there's very little, if any, understory here to create food, cover, or browse for deer. I can't blame anyone for wanting to improve their habitat and get sunlight to the ground to create early successional growth that produces cover, security, and bedding areas. But I also want to caution you that dropping trees all over and making it very difficult for deer to move around will create a lot of areas to be known as what we call tornado zones that deer will avoid and not use and will change their movements that could end up affecting stands that used to be positive movement zones for you. What I want to show you today is how you can create a natural pinch point, bedding area, and barriers by varying the height of the hinge cuts and where you cut so that mature buck movement will drift downwind of the bedding areas that you have created so you can go in and hunt during that prime time when those bucks are on their feet and moving. This is going to require that you get fairly strategic in creating openings, creating high bedding areas, visual screening, and barriers. And these are techniques that truly are learned and experience is the best way for you to figure it out. So I always suggest start on areas that aren't all that important to you and once you've learned how to do this then go over and create that incredible kill location pinch point that you can get that target buck to slip through when he has no idea you're there. So what you see right here is a diagram I've made to kind of explain 
what's going on if you can imagine being a hundred feet up looking straight down where you've done your work so this is a large hinge cutting where I have openings and networks and trail systems moving all over throughout here but you just can't see it because I don't show all of it but I'm also going to have entry and exit points over here that I cut holes so that deer can enter and exit on this side and areas over here where I take my chainsaw and cut holes through the logs and make nice openings that are in that 30 inches to 4 foot wide area so they can easily walk in and out and you can see here I've got a large stump where the one of the first trees that I cut laid over here and I've hinged trees over the top of that uh, I've got a smaller tree here that I was able to hinge and it stayed attached and then I hinged trees over there and trees over some I pull down so you get the idea and I've got a a nice oak or a maple tree here that I hinged that goes under this tree and over the top of these and this limb is hanging out from this area out here in the open right along the edge around chest to shoulder high so I'm making a mock scrape here so I want does and bucks to frequently visit this as they you know pass through this gap that I've made I've got a nice oak tree over here with three different limbs on it and I was able to get my stand up about 22 feet and you can see just the top of my my climbing sticks right here and this is a stand I'm gonna hunt out of and right in this area for about 40 to 60 yards I create a barrier and some of these are going to be cut uh, somewhere around knee high some are going to be waist high uh, large trees are going to be notched and fallen small trees are going to be tucked underneath and pulled down and the goal is to make this not for bedding usually about five to ten yards wide and what you want is an absolute barrier so you're gonna come in and access in along this side to get into this stand and then all the bucks and doe movement will cruise through here but this is specifically set up for those daytime walking cruiser bucks those last few days of October first couple of weeks in November should the wind be a northwest wind post cold front high pressure day those days that all of us just love to hunt in the timber then your bucks are going to cruise through here as the wind comes from this direction you might get bucks that cruise this way and they're basically getting downwind of these large bedding areas that are going to be somewhere between three quarters and an acre and a half in, dis in size and their goal is to get downwind and not only scent check the bedding area but he may stop and work or at least scent check this scrape and you'll be here somewhere between 25 and 30 yards away with this nice gap that you've built and it works very well so this is the strategy where you can get a lot more precise in how you set your stands based on the bedding areas and if you have a large enough property you can build three four five six of these and you can set them up for your south winds and your east winds so that when it is prime time you so then you've always got one of these great stand sites that you can hunt while these bucks are scent checking regardless of the wind directions so this is what I wanted you guys to really look at I think this will help you guys visualize what you're trying to build when you're cutting down trees and creating bedding areas but you've also got to have some areas where you haven't cut trees and it's fairly open in here for the bucks and the does to cruise through now don't be surprised if things don't work exactly as you had it planned and it's going to take a couple of seasons for the deer to come in and adjust to the habitat that you just created and I always like going out when there's a decent snowfall right after the hunting seasons have closed and look for bedding areas and see that they're using them. You may find that you'll have to open up more holes than you thought, especially when you hunt it a few times and watch how the deer react. I always try to think that I have all the entries and exits covered and then I'll hunt the stand and watch does being pushed by bucks and see they're up against trees that they want to be able to cut through 
So I'll have to go back in the spring and cut a few gaps and openings and make things a little easier for deer to move around. But that's just part of the learning process. And keep this tip in mind. If you'd like to hinge larger trees and have them stay connected and alive, you first must have an abundant amount of treetops for that tree to land into, like the one you see here. So here is a picture which is a hunter's view looking right into the exact plan that I showed the diagram of. You'll notice that there is some open, uncut hardwoods before I get into the hinge cut. I hope you take a deep look into your property and realize that without a plan you can end up with a lot of random movement and with a plan and strategy you can have deer go right where you'd like them to. And keep in mind failing to plan is planning to fail. And if you do everything right this buck that you see pictured here was killed in this gap. So give it a try and see what you can come up with in creating a better habitat for you to hunt.